done a great job by our community in reporting suspicious incidents under our see something, say something. In this case, it was hear something, say something. That's Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley, who says one phone call helps stop a crime in progress. A resident calls the sheriff's office for a deputy to investigate loud noise coming from the Tanzas Woods golf course. Deputies responded and found a 48-year-old male having sex with an underage juvenile. The man is 48-year-old Alfonso Joseph. He's a Palm Coast resident who has been a pastor at several Benel churches. He's charged with lewd and lascivious behavior with an individual between 12 and 16 years old. Joseph said he met the boy on a dating app and the boy told him he was 18 years old. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley issued this reminder to the public. So again, if you see something, say something, or hear something, say something, and think working together with the sheriff's office, we can continue to drive crime down and arrest the vendor. Joseph was released after posting bond. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. Multiple sources are reporting a Flagler County commissioner tried to talk his way out of a traffic citation, and now it has become national news. Flagler County Commissioner 51-year-old Joe Mullins was pulled over the beginning of June in Seminole County and June 19th in Flagler County for allegedly speeding. In one case, Mullins is reporting as declaring, I run the county. However, Mullins says the reports are just media spin. He talks exclusively with WNZF. It was fun around. The guy asked me at first what I did to drive a car like that. I didn't answer. When he came back up and after he gave the ticket, he was explaining to what to do with the ticket. I, I said it sarcastically. And, and, you know, ironically, if you Google who runs the country, it says the president. Who runs the state? It says the governor. It's a figure of speech. Um, I was just letting him know I knew what to do with the ticket and I would handle it and I would take care of it. Listen, it's scary being on the side of that road. You and I drive that road all the time and realize 90 miles an hour is nothing on that road. It, it, the average speed is around 85 miles an hour. And I don't want to be sitting on the side of the road, neither does the police officer. And, you know, it just, again, it was a bad day and, and I owned up to it. I, I accepted. I paid my fine. After the stops in Flagler County and Seminole County this year, news outlets report Mullins wrote letters to the judge in each case, also asking that points not be assessed on his license. I wrote the letter to the judge and asked how to, the best way to handle it, as any citizen can do. Uh, I am human. I make mistakes like everybody else does. And when I make them, I, I don't think anyone can beat me up more than myself. Uh, I'm, I'm saddened that our today's media would rather spend stuff like this. Uh, again, a thousand tickets a day, and this one makes national news. That's in Florida alone. And then 130,000, it's a speeding ticket. And I was frustrated. I was upset. But it wasn't to get out of the ticket. It was more upset that I got in it. I love our law enforcement. Our Florida State Troopers do an incredible job. They keep our community safe. They keep our roads safe. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. Palm Coast Vice Mayor Eddie Branchino stormed off the dais and threatened to leave his elected position last week after his fellow council members didn't agree with him on the issue of creating a standalone survey to ask residents about multifamily housing. Branchino said he had been planning a walkout for some time now and decided this meeting was the time to do it. The attention, that, was, that was the whole idea. That was the whole strategy. First page of some of the local newspaper, even the forum, questions asked to the candidates. They were questioned about it, so the attention is out there. I was going to do it in the past over the, the raises, but I decided to keep it for this time because it's a more important situation for me, multifamily home. Branchino explains his position. You're creating affordable housing that people can't afford. And when they move into a housing that they cannot afford, that will turn into a, a, a subsidized housing. And that's what I don't want to do. I live on affordable housing because I live in a house that I could afford. I wish I could live in Mar-a-Lago, but I can't. So why should anybody else pay for my wishes? Okay, And I don't mean this, and I, I want to be clear about this. This has nothing to do with diversity. It has to do with density. Density brings crime. Trust me, I've seen it, and that's when I compared it with Newark. I compared it to Dias because I know firsthand what happened in Newark. Therefore, 
I don't want Palm Coast to even come remotely comparable to Newark. And I say this because I know Newark well. Branchino's term ends in four months, and he will not run for re-election, but that doesn't mean his career in politics is over. If I decide to run for politics in two years, the only available seat is the mayorship. So most likely, if I decide to go back into politics, which, by the way, I love elected officials, but I hate politicians. So if I come back, I'll come back as an elected official, and the only thing available for me, it would be the mayorship. Frank Kino says he will finish his term as a Palm Coast City Councilman and will return to the dais for this morning's meeting. Toby Tobin, the publisher of GoToby.com and host of WNZF's Real Estate Matters, says Councilman Branchino's position on affordable housing is incorrect. There are two different levels. There are the people that can't afford to, to have a home or a place to live because they're in the social welfare system or should be. But there's an, a whole other, much broader swath of people who have jobs. They just don't get paid enough to be able to afford to live in Palm Coast today because the cost of living is so, is so high. Tobin says changes do need to be made. There are paths to attainable housing that do not fit into our existing zoning. And our existing zoning, in conjunction with the, the abundance of nimbyism, combined to make it impossible to build affordable or attainable homes, either for rent or, or to own. Real Estate Matters airs at 11 a.m. on Saturday, and the podcast is available anytime on the Flagler Radio app. I'm Rich Petschke. The Flagler Beach City Commission had two days of workshops, and the city manager said one of the things they considered is increasing wages for city employees. City manager William Whitson said on a recent episode of the Business Report that people who work to serve Flagler Beach residents and visitors could make more money in lesser paying jobs. What I'm asking the commission to do is consider these situations and see what, if anything, they want to do. Whitson said that as the city manager, he cannot tell the commission what to do, but that they may want to consider a pay increase. The business report is on WNZF on Saturday mornings at 10. It's on the Flagler radio app anytime. Tomorrow, there's power in a PowerPoint. From the WNZF newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.